Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the Real Estate Podcast. I'm Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart International. And I want to welcome you all to today's episode where we have the special treat of playing for you the recording of a webinar that took place last week between our Senior VP of Marketing, Adam Bauer, and Emilio Despirito, who is the team leader of the Despirito team in Rhode Island. And the Despirito team is one of the top teams in the entire country for HomeSmart. And Emilio is one of the top agents and team leaders. And just the insights that Emilio shared, the questions that Adam asked Emilio and the responses that I heard, I thought were worth sharing with all of you today on The Real Estate. So without any further ado, please enjoy Emilio Despirito and Adam Bauer discussing marketing and what top agents should be doing right now. Emilio, I'll kick it off to you. So I know a lot of questions I get is, what's the market like in Rhode Island and what does that look like for you right now as we, as we sit here in 2020? Sure, the market is like almost everywhere else I'd imagine, very low inventory. Adam. And, uh, and by the way, thank you, Corey, for that great introduction. Awesome. So proud to be here, guys. Thank you. But the markets, you know, it's a seller's market. The median price is about 300000 on single family, three bed, two bath, uh, 18 square, uh, 1,500 square foot home. So it's pretty hot. Homes are selling in about two or three weeks on average. It's pretty much that in a nutshell. Great. And, and so with that, uh, and obviously some of the tax and tactics and things have changed. Have you had to adjust um, your marketing strategies uh, to fit the new market or how have you kind of adapted to uh, the new or current market? Yeah, you know, um, everybody was, I think, a bit nervous and, and I hate guys, I hate to talk about COVID. I don't even want to talk about it, right? But everybody was so nervous getting into this. And I thought as realtors, we did an amazing job, right? The, the housing market is going insane. Everybody seems to be doing great. So that's awesome. But we, we pivoted very quickly and uh, we just, we blasted it out there. We had local news stations contacting us and I want to get into that and how they contacted us after. But um, basically, they contacted us to, to say, hey, what is the Despirito team doing? So we had two of our four news stations here in the Providence market call us, and they put us out there. I think that was a nice push along with our radio show and whatnot. People just knew we were virtual. And while all of us are probably <clears throat> virtual, we all have the same technology and whatnot, the Despirito team was one of them that was publicized. And I'm going to tell you guys how to get publicized in a bit. Um, so that that was pretty much our push. We're about we're going to be about 15 million ahead of last year with the same number of agents. That's that's awesome and great. So question from the group: um, Please define digital transformation for for a layman. So we'll talk a lot about some ways that you transform your business, but digital transformation, I would say, simply is figuring out ways to add more. Um, digital technology, whether it's in your operations or just in your everything that you're doing from a business, one to help automate, but really how you use digital, um, use digital media or digital tools to really automate and streamline your business and where you kind of, and infuse that into your business to really streamline what you're doing and, uh, and operate more efficiently. So uh, that can be simple or complex. So when you hear that and we talk about that and some of the things that you do from a marketing or business perspective, that's what you kind of feel, figure out on digital uh, transformation. Um, so, so you mentioned some of the things that you do. So what do you guys, you guys are doing a ton. So what are the key things or just the breadth of things that you guys are doing um, from, a, from a marketing perspective? Sure, definitely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you guys all see the screen? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Like I said, I want you guys to get a lot of takeaways from here. So number one, we connect with the local news or local bloggers, okay? So this site right here is rinewstoday.com. What, what I think works very well for search engine optimization and most importantly for you to be like an authority in your marketplace is to get on these local blog sites and just start talking smack, talk, start talking real estate. Literally, you can see there is literally no consistency to where I'm posting on this website, but it's a cool thing to have right? Like where's the luxury market in Rhode Island? Like 
to sell or not sell is, is like the question, right? So I just simply put some, some things down here, some points. I'm not a great writer. I love to write. I was a C student in school, probably not the brightest guy in the world, whatever, but I do this, right? And it's fantastic. And you can share it all over social media. A quick Here's question another. on that. So how did, I know I get a lot of questions. So how did you get connected to RI News or an agent when they're looking like, I think a lot of times they don't know how to, to get to the point where they can get on a news site or get published in places like, so how did you go around saying like, I want to be uh, published and have information on these sites? Like, how did you actually get on, on this site and how should agents think about that? Sure. Think about it like connecting with prospects. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to list this house. Right. So I took two words out of my vocabulary. And, and if that word is try, I hate, listen to the people that say try, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try when I do it, you know, I will do it. Right. I'm sorry. I will do it. And then the word if, well, if I win the lottery, if I no, when, I do this when I work hard, I will make money. So I just contact these local places and I just say, Hey, I got a podcast, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm, or, or you could even just say, Hey, look, I'm a local real estate agent in the area. I, I just started blogging. I'd love to blog for you. I'd love to be a resource for you and just stay in front of them. We did the same thing with uh, NBC, ABC, um, all these different stations, Adam, and now they contact us whenever there's there's things they want to know about about the real estate market. Absolutely, yeah. I'd say you know, not being afraid to, I think you nailed it. Reach out uh, to different news sources. They are always looking for uh, people to quote and get information on the real estate market. And a lot of times they don't have a go-to person. So if you can reach out and try to make those connections, whether it's big or small. Uh, they love that. And then also just, you know, something that you do, you know, the market, you know, the data, and then it's also just being informed with that as well. So when they reach out to you, you have a good informed opinion that you can, you can give them as well. And, and it, it's the best four letter F word out there. It's free. Yep. <laughs> it's free. Awesome. So Rhode Island uh, Blogger is another site, guys. This is a local events website. Now, what I do with this one is I exchange spots on my podcast radio show, and I let her come on and talk about the five events that are happening in the area. She shares this out on her Facebook page. She shares from my team page on, on her Facebook page, and she also puts our stuff, right, like right on her her website too, videos, this, that. And it's really great because we've got people that are traveling from outside of Rhode Island coming in. So now we can add this as a value add to our sellers when we're going on listings that no one else in our marketplace has. Free. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you do some, so you're doing some, uh, so you're doing a lot of, it looks like uh, articles and, and blogs. What other kinds of uh, areas that are you are you doing to kind of round out your marketing as well? So you got a ton of tab open, so I'm always interested to, to see all the things you guys do. This is how my brain works, as I'm sure a lot of people on this call like this is my my computer is overloaded with tabs. Um, so uh, basically, another thing that we'll do as far as marketing is. Um, I hate to play video on Zoom, guys, but I'm going to try this. It might be a little slow. We throw events, right? Like we linked up with a local property management company. And, and by the way, property management companies, guys, you probably all know they have a ton of different properties that might be up and selling and they don't, they're not great listing agents, right? So when you find a property management company like I have here in Rhode Island that focuses on just managing the properties, they wanna link up with a realtor or a team that can list and sell their properties, help their buyers out. So that's what we found with this local one. We also teamed up with them and we do events that pull investors in and all sorts of other people. Here's a quick video that we did for this event. There's Dean. Oh, 
Okay, now I want I want to tell you why that event was awesome. Well, and, oh, I want to tell you why that event was awesome and why when you do events, you should have a videographer there because we literally chopped up about 30 different videos and they're all bite-sized videos because people don't have a large attention span, right? Like I'm surprised some of you guys are still awake right now. <laughs> Thank you. So um, we chop up all these videos and then we blast them out and share them all over the place and we tag the people that were in them. So now you're getting in front of their whole sphere as well. Videographers, if you find someone right out of college or you find a local photographer or whoever that's really good with the camera, or you just have a son or a daughter or somebody that can follow you around even with an iPhone, do it. It's worth it. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great point. I think you know, one is anytime you're doing, um, you're doing an event or something, uh, anything from a marketing perspective or just connecting in the community, uh, one, hiring a videographer to help or finding somebody, you know, finding an intern who will help you, who wants to get some, trying to get some experience. There's a great opportunity always to connect with interns in that, but always you do a really good job of um, thinking beyond that event of how can I get life out of this event and marketing and marketing my business beyond this event. So, so many times events, people will do things and it just dies after that event. So you do a really great job of, um, you have that event and you, you think, oh, okay, I'm going to cut this up into a bunch of different clips and then use that uh, in the future. So how do you like think about how you could use those in the future or what does that look like for, for you guys when you think about marketing something like that post event and in, in for clients in the future? Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's a great question. And there's a lot of different ways I go with that question. Here's the thing is like, I don't want you guys getting overwhelmed in the details, right? Because I'm a type of person, I get super overwhelmed in the details. We're going to cover a lot of content here. Hopefully you can walk away with at least something. But the events are not about the events. The events are about the content you can pull from these events. And all of those pieces you can share day after day after day. Don't put all the videos all out at once. Have video a day and don't overthink what these videos are all about, okay? So literally you can put anything out there. It's more important to be in front of people, right? So some really good content I guess you could get from an event would be if it's for your clients, if the event's for your clients, have the videographer go around and, and say, hey, what? give them three questions, right? How is it like working with Mary or Sierra or Kristen or, or, or Vivek or Stacy? How is it like working with these ladies, right? Or, or what is the number one reason why you picked Arnold Huff as your agent, right? What did uh, Carol Smith do differently than these other agents? What attracted you to use Dean Deton in court? Okay, so have all these things. And then you don't include the question, you just have the video editor just put boom, 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 all their replies. Those are testimonials. Video testimonials are so kick-ass. They go so far, guys. And you can put that on Google My Business. And, and guys, huge advocate of Google My Business, okay? Download that app if you don't have it on your phone. Please, everyone's on Facebook, on Instagram. I said it last time I was on, on uh, one of these uh, wonderful Zoom calls with HomeSmart. Google My Business is where it's at. You can post directly to it. P David, you got a shirtless man walking behind you. <laughs> David Dion. <laughs> Never mind. That was funny. I just caught that in the corner of my eye. Yo, that was my son. <laughs> and he's 17, you pervert. <laughs> Dude, you, you got a 17-year-old shirtless guy walking behind your screen. So that's All right, whatever. So I'm... Um, so Google My Business is absolutely huge, okay? And you want to get everybody's videos. <laughs> huh? No, it's okay. It's okay. You see the same thing at the beach, whatever. So, um, and and you want to add to those reviews. Forget about Zillow reviews, okay? Because I guarantee you, everyone on here is gung ho about getting Zillow reviews, okay? Go for Google reviews. What do people hit first? They hit Google before Zillow. They're Googling top real estate agent in area, top this, top that. After this call, I want you guys to Google top real estate agent in Rhode Island. Guess what you're going to see? Despirito team. 
over and over again. Best real estate agent, top real estate, all that stuff, top real estate team. It works awesome. Yeah, I agree with you. And to that, you know, the, to that point is so many times with um, within the funnel, you have always like top of awareness, getting people's attention. In the middle of the funnel is where people start to do some research. And a lot of times they're going to just put your name or, or Google you prior to calling you. And Google does come up first. And those reviews are the things that help them convert into leads when they actually do some research on you. So having something out there uh, in different places that people are going to, to see who you are and having that from outside sources really helps, helps the conversion and just help, it helps you move them along to actually be willing to reach out to you. So kind of knowing that uh, that's where they are in the phase of, of sales is they're more in the research phase where they're further down, know who you are. Testimonials really hit on that kind of, on that kind of uh, person and where they are looking for somebody to work with as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hey, Adam, yep. can, can I ask the, the, the viewers right now if they would mind just typing in, sharing in the chat box, how much are you spending estimated combined on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, combined, how much are you spending? I'm curious. Pop that in the chat if you'd like to share that, guys. And we're going to give everybody a couple minutes to put that in. And, um, and I, I don't know if you want to ask me another question. Yeah. So, uh, what, you know, what do you, uh, how do you view, you know, you got, you kind of brought it up, but how do you kind of view those, those places that you purchase leads or working with the Zillow, the truly is the realtor coms of the, of the world. How do you, how do you view those? I love what I'm seeing here right now. I view it just like home smart peeps are viewing it. Like, look, like when you have zero, zero, this is fantastic. A year ago, you would have never seen this. I love this guy, zero, zero, zero. So guys, I view it like when you, we have the listings, we have all the power, right? We're controlling the market and these websites need our listings. And I don't know if you guys noticed, I'm sure you did. People a lot of times want to go directly to the listing agent. So I know on Zillow, we get leads anyways for free. And the people are contacting us, um, you know, direct, hey, can 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 we see your house? Can we see this? Can we see that? So we spend zero on on Realtor, on Zillow, on Trulia. I think a lot more people are getting away from that. Where we do a ton of business, and I actually like these services, is Upnest. Does anybody know what Upnest is or Top Agents Ranked? Top Agents Ranked is is actually has a partnership with HomeSmart. Their uh, referral, what is it called? It's uh <laughs> David. Um uh, I forget the name of the company, but it's, it goes by topagentsrank.com. And uh, they, they charge you a 25 to 35% referral fee, but these are vetted referrals. These are really good and they're not like Zillow leads, okay? I know we have about an 8% closing ratio with these and we don't mind paying out that referral fee because it's free to get these, okay? That, that's where we're getting a lot of that, that other stuff. Sure. Um, so, you know, one of the things, uh, as well, you know, I think there's a, there's always a big push to get, uh, to get new leads, particularly as a new agent. I understand where that comes from, mm -hmm. but still the most, the most, the number one source of business is referral. So how do you go around marketing to or, or hitting referral or trying to get people who you've worked with in the past or hit that sphere of influence and market to those versus always trying to market to somebody who's new and never heard about you before. Yeah, great. So, so remarketing to your sphere is, is absolutely important. I was awful at that for so long until I picked up a website called YLOPO. Okay. So I'm going to pop that in the, um, the uh, chat below, YLOPO.com. This website, this company is awesome. They've got these templated websites, but what they do is they do a ton of marketing on uh, different social media sites for you and they remarket, they re-engage people that um, are already in your sphere. So, so for, get, for maybe somebody who's newer and not familiar, what do you mean by remarket? So they actually will target, you will upload your contact list, right? And then they will target everyone you know already. And then your ads will just be popping up. Like, you know, they'll see the Spirito team everywhere over and over and over from games like words with friends to um you know all the different websites they follow right it's just one of those ads so 
I don't like to reach out to people just to say like, hey, how are you? I don't like the pop by stuff. I know everybody likes all that stuff. I don't like it because let me tell you something. When I'm at home and someone knocks on my door, I'm like, who the hell is that? Right? Like, wh who's at my door? Like, number one. Number two, when I'm with my family, I don't want to be sold. Get out of here. I don't want, unless you're a kid shoveling snow. Yes, we get snow over here. Unless you're a kid shoveling snow, I'm not answering the door. Okay? Um, so, so that's how people are. So what we do to provide value once a year, we'll send everybody an updated um, fair market value paper report. And we'll share it in a beautiful Despirito Team Home Smart folder that they have. And they get that every single year with a lovely handwritten note. It's value. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, within that too is there's, I think the more that you can set uh, expectations and having things on repeat where people just expect consistency from you, that also just, it, it helps remind them because people forget and knowing that they have that every year, I know I get I get a football schedule every year from the same from the same agent, and I know that agent because every year I know I'm going to get my football schedule in the mail from from this agent. Anything that you can do to remind them and just get that on repeat with them mm -hmm. keeps you at top of mind, and they know and they come to expect that, even if it's nothing that's super high level value. The fact that it comes every year, they just know to expect it, and that's that is a I think that's wildly important. Um, and yes, this is being recorded for later uh, viewing, Andrew. Um, and so, okay, so you do a lot from from marketing. How do you um, how do you decide how much to spend your time on marketing versus sales, and and doing and balancing all of that? Because obviously, you you know, it's a sales role, but marketing is an important part of that. How do you balance? Uh, how do you balance all of that? So um, that question I've got to answer two different ways because there's some people without teams and there's some people with teams. So I can answer that when I was um, without a team, um, which I personally would never go back to because uh, I know how efficient it is. Without a team, when I was on my own, I would just spend nights after dinner blogging and I would just write blogs and I would share them all over the place um, and I'd work on my social media. So sales was all during the day and then after dinner, was marketing. That's just how I did it. I had absolutely no life, probably about a hundred hours a week. I'm sure a lot of you can do the same thing. Nothing I do here is magic, but that that's, that's how that was spent. Now I've got a, a video editor on my team and I have a marketing person that actually just quit. Um, so I gotta, I gotta actually find someone else, but they do all of that for us. I just, I, and I let them get creative. And what, and Adam, if I could just throw one thing in here real quick, sure. I, I want to know how many people, if I could see a raise of hands with the videos that I have up here, how many people invest in the stock market? Okay. Awesome. So quite a bit, quite a bit, right? Okay. So <laughs> she, Melissa's saying no. All right. So if you're investing in the stock market, but you're not investing in your own personal brand. I want you to take, this sounds sound crazy, take it all out of the stock market and put it all into your real estate business. Because if you can't invest in you and if you can't throw money at your business to invest in the growth of that, why the hell are you allowing some people you don't even know to run with your money? I'm going to bet on me. I'm going 100% all in on Despirito. And when I make the money that I'm, that I'm ready to make, then I'll throw some money in the stock market. Uh, that's, uh, so, uh, so you take all that money, how do you determine what you're going to spend it on? I mean, there's so many options out uh, there. And so how do you, um, how do you determine where you want to spend your marketing uh, and business dollars? I look at whatever everyone else is doing and I don't do that. So, um, you know, it's like no one's in radio anymore. Okay. Well, we're in an election year everyone's listening to radio, right? A lot of people are, you put it on in your car. You might listen to a local news station or something. So I'm on a local news station. I happen to be on there for a while. All those, all those, those things. And I'm not saying throw thousands at radio guys. I'm not saying that, but I would suggest ylopo.com. That website, again, I, it, they're not paying me to say this. ylopo.com has been unbelievable. I'm not sure if anybody here uses it, 
They've got an artificial intelligence built into the website that talks with people. Some other websites may now have that, but it's been converting leads, believe it or not. They also have a couple, um, let me show you this thing real quick here. This is where I would spend my money though. Bear with me. I'm just gonna click over to here. Okay, all right, so you can do these these seller marketing reports, okay? What this is, is this shows ads that you've pulled out for active listings or for open houses or for just solds. You can literally just blanket social media and, and people that specialize in social media, Adam, not you being a realtor trying to figure out who the heck to target, they do this stuff for you. So for 65 bucks, what this is showing me here is I got, one, if you guys can see this here, these numbers, 131 people saw my ad already. This was in the first couple of hours. Almost 4,000 people are going to see the ad. 2,300 people are going to see the video. 690 may get interest and 30 or so people might, um, you know, jump on my website and convert as leads it's for 65 bucks. That's money well spent. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, knowing those numbers are key. And I think, you know, there's a, you get something that that site does, that, that that site does well, but there's this, anytime you're providing, right now, everyone's talking about the market being hot and what's the real estate market doing and how do I stay, providing them with information on what's happening in the market and, and helping to demystify some of that and just giving people updates is really key, no matter what you're using for a a, uh, a seller report or a market report that is important right now is that's what people are um i get that question all the time like what's the market's doing great right now like people will continue that's what your people are asking so hitting on that and having convert being able to provide them information and uh it that kind of helps address that is i think key um whether using that or another tool as well i think that's just you said i think that's really important right now uh, with everything moving so quickly. People want to know what is the market doing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked a little bit about uh, individual teams. So how did you determine, like, I want to, that it was time for you to go from an individual uh, to a team? What did that look like for you? Because I suck at a lot of stuff. So <laughs> I figured out who would be a good fit for what I'm not good at. Like, here's what I'm really good at. Like, I'm good at networking, meeting people. I think I'm okay at this stuff, right? Like this is the stuff I want to be doing. What I'm really bad at is details. So you want to tell me like, you know, there, there's about 185 steps to the real estate process, right? Uh, on the seller side. Um, so, you know, I, I'm going to drop balls. I, I just, I did it. So I got to a point, Adam, where I had like eight transactions going at once, right? Which is, it's good business. It's not crazy business. It's great. It's great business. But and I started dropping balls and I, and, and I was screwing up and I was like, oh my God, I got to start a team. The best part about that was when I started a team, I had people in local brokerages literally come up to me in public and say, who do you think you are? You do, you're new. You can't start a team. This like literally like children taunting me. Now, as a kid, I got made fun of all the time. I had these huge glasses, right? And like, I just like, I looked like a total, total nerd with these big glasses that my mom got me in the nineties. They were like eighties glasses, but I love that because that, that taught me to have really thick skin. So when these people came up and they started doing that, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go all in on my brand. I got billboards all around that area. Okay. The Despirito team, this, that, whatever else. And I mean, I invested all my money in that, Adam. And, and since then, I'll never look back. I burnt all my ships, like the famous Cortez story, if you guys know that story. And I just went all in on Despirito. That's awesome. So something you mentioned prior to the call that I wanted to, to bring up about doing, doing billboards or doing radio is you do a lot of different things. Talk about like, you just do so many things. So just talk about your experience and not being afraid to try new things. And just what, what does that look like for you when you're like, Hey, I'll try this new marketing thing. Or how do you how do you evaluate new marketing channels and when to jump in and when to not? Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, you said billboards. Let me start there. So, I spent a ton of money on billboards. 
it really didn't do much except for, oh, I know you. So that that's the type of marketing that is passive. It's not active. My suggestion is to throw all your money into active marketing, right? So something people can do is get on a website like Red X. Like, I don't know if anybody calls expireds or withdrawn listings, but Red X is a dialer and you just go ahead, go on there and just start dialing, right? Some people like it, some people don't. It can also geo farm and it can call for sale by owners. But guys, this stuff is all free. You go into your local MLS and you just pop in, you know, expireds with drones, go to that's me.com or 411.info and you can pull up a lot of people's names and sometimes even their email addresses. Um, so, or you can go knock on their door. Again, a lot of people don't like it, but that's what I used to do. I just used to go knock on the doors. So that's, that's free. It's active. Now, if you are going to go billboards, my suggestion is to make the billboard very blank okay and just have like one or two things pop on there right like it shouldn't have your your phone number your website all this stuff what i see a lot of big players on billboards do now is they don't even have their contact info right they just have their name because people are going to google you my new business cards right I just say google us right of course they have our logos and all that other stuff so i don't hear anything about that but but <clears throat> The down about but it says google us and then our name that's it and i know it might sound crazy yes so but. i want to i want to add to that because i watched your video on facebook with your elevator pitch <laughs> and and i would love to have you share with everybody what you say about listings and at the very end of it that's exactly what you said google us yeah. Yeah. My friend, we were literally getting in an elevator pitch. I mean, in an elevator and he said, Hey, give me your pitch. And it was an elevator full of people. I had a couple of drinks, you know, whatever you're having an event. And, uh, and I said like this thing, it wasn't even really cool or worth repeating. And then at the end I said, Google us. And he's like, that's it. That's the elevator pitch. Right? So realistically guys, think about this for a second, whatever, People are going to Google you, right? You have to have something on Google. And, and, if, and if you're putting out a ton of different content, they're going to find a lot about you, right? And you're, you're, there's a lot of things about you that people don't know that they could connect with that are probably really interesting, right? So it's okay to put things on there like your hobbies, if you like to bike, if you like to ski or what. People want to connect with you as a person. Go around touring properties, you know, go on your camera phone with it. Put it on Facebook. Facebook videos are now getting hit on Google with SEO. Get on YouTube. Make a YouTube channel. I strongly suggest that. That's the number two largest search engine in the world outside of Google. Get yourself out there. Don't be afraid because if you don't do it, you're, you're going to fall off the, the map. You're going to fall off the, the, the earth. You know, you're, you're not going to get a ton of business. You're going to depend on websites like Zillow or this or that, that are literally going the opposite way of us. So uh, talk a little bit more about getting on YouTube and you do a ton of video. So how did you, what would, how, how did you start to get on video? And like, what did that process look for somebody maybe who's not on video right now? How yeah. can you're like, go get on YouTube. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get on YouTube. Like, what do I do now? Or how do I start getting the ball rolling on myself, getting myself on YouTube and doing videos? What, what would you rec What would you tell somebody? So I, th so, I mean, the best thing about 2020 is, is you can literally Google anything. There's a video for it. So there's probably a video that explains how to get my YouTube channel started. I strongly, and, and Adam, I'm not trying to be a jerk, like, cause oh. that was a great question. And this brings us with this great content, like go on there because sometimes we overthink stuff and, and, and look at that, how to start a YouTube channel. Now, some of the stuff you might want to talk about is this problems. What are some problems that happen in real estate? Give people the real deal, right? Number two, costs. What do things cost? What's the real deal on things cost? Um, and, and, then, and then number three, you know, stories. Give different stories about different situations and, and how you've helped people out in different areas. Like, you know, I sold this guy a house and the septic system was like bum. He found out only after he closed this or that. We found out that the seller didn't disclose stuff, whatever. So what does that story look like? What did you do? And use keywords so that when people are searching, your videos are going to pop up.
Yeah, that's re that's that's really great. I think you know, um, helping people with their problems and giving them information is is a really great way to get your name out there. And you know, like you you're big. You keep on talking about Google. People, that's what they do. They go to Google either for a problem or a person. So the more that you can kind of have things that are relevant to those problems, people will have will help you uh, potentially uh, work with them. And that's you know they've done tons of studies at, with. Um, uh, millennial home buyers and millennial shopping habits online is people who give them value first. They're tend to, they're very guarded against traditional advertising and they just, they've seen digital advertising their, their whole life. So they see a digital ad, they're likely to block, to block it out just because they see so many. So the way you break down that barrier is giving them some value first, and then they're willing to listen to the advertising after that you've kind of bypassed their mental gatekeeper that says, oh, this person's give me something first, then I'll listen to their ad and oh, then I see their name again. And so maybe I'll reach out to them and after I Google them, of course. So I think really thinking of how you can provide value out to them, whether it's solving problems, whether it's uh, giving market information, just helping people answer the questions that they have or addressing that is, is key. And you do that well through a lot of your, through your content. So I think that's, I think that's a wise and good, um, I think that's a wise and uh, strong strategy. What are some other, I know you had a bunch of tabs up. What are some of the other things that you do that you have found effective in your, in your marketing efforts or just wanted to share uh, today? So, so I want to give, um, so if, if I could give a suggestion, and I can go back to that in a second, yeah. but I think, but, but if I can give you a suggestion, um, get rid of, and this might sound crazy, but if you're in the car driving around a lot, like a lot of us are, you know, why are you listening to music? Um, why not download Audible and maybe a lot of you do it, listen to audiobooks because it just takes one or two ideas from a book that will literally close that sale for you, right? So um, one book I highly recommend for anybody that's interested in making awesome content is They Ask, You Answer. Don't ask me who the, the author is. He does a fantastic job. Love him. Don't know him. They Ask, You Answer. Too many details, right? They Ask, You Answer. Google that. It's a fantastic book. You should definitely listen to it. And even if you prefer to read, even if you're just listening to that as you're driving around, it helps. Here's another one that I started reading too. This is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys saw this book, Copywriting Secrets. See, I have his name, Jim Edwards, Copywriting Secrets. This is really cool because like me, I'm not a great writer, but you know, he gives you the formula and he gives you templates all throughout here to make people want to click your stuff so you can have some clickbait out there. That's the kind of stuff in addition to um, other types of marketing books and whatnot that I strongly suggest to listen to while you're in the car or when you're working out. And, and my wife was like, why do you, how do you listen to marketing books when you're working out? Cause that shit pumps me up. I get excited. Like, thinking real estate and marketing, like, hell yeah, I, I can use this stuff. That's awesome. What was the, uh, what was the name of the second book again? Um, Copywriting Secrets. I'm going to find it here. I'm Googling as we're doing this to throw them in the, uh, uh, in the chat. There we go. All right. I, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm throwing this one in, uh, throwing this one in the chat as, uh, as well. So you guys both will have access. Anyone who wants to download these ones, that link may, the second one may not be great, but both of the links for both of them are in there. If you use Amazon, um, just easier. So you don't have to, you don't have to remember them later because I always am in webinars and somebody said, go do this. And I'm like, what the heck was that? Or where do I find it? So there's those links to those, those books. If you guys uh, want to access those and see those um and see those later so and a, and a quick note you can download the chat by saving it you can save the chat if you click the three little buttons on the right of the chat it opens up a pop-up window and it says save chat so you can save it and have those links for later i did not know that that is pretty cool hot dog i taught you something <laughs> i can't believe it yeah awesome can i say something about podcasts sure okay there's this app called Anchor, okay? Anchor. So if you're interested in doing a podcast, if you go download Anchor, you can literally record right from your phone. Now, I started a podcast because I ride my bicycle and, I, and like 
I love doing it. I love getting out in nature and decompressing after stressful real estate. So I literally was like, oh man, I want to do real estate stuff while I'm on my bike. Sick. So I started recording real estate basics, just a stupid, silly podcast of me giving basic advice and, and it's on anchor. And when you record to anchor, it goes to iTunes, it goes to Stitcher, it goes to Radio Public. It just feeds out to all these different podcasts. I never even advertised this thing. I got like a hundred listens, whatever. Um, if you, so you could have a local show or you could have a national show or you could have anything. And another cool thing too, guys, check this out, right? I, I get these book authors and stuff to come on my show and they autograph stuff and send it to me. And that's my deal. I'm like, hey, I want you to come on my show, but you got to send me a book and it needs to be autographed. And it's great. I'm like building up my book pile. And then you tag them and they tag you. And then, and then you blast it all out all over social media. And now you're in front of their whole sphere as well, which is great. So you're leveraging and in front of all of their people's eyes. So talk a little bit about your show for those who, who don't you know, know you or, or know anything about your show. Tell, tell me about, uh, tell a little bit more about your show, what that all entails and just how you found that to be effective for your marketing strategy. Yeah. So, I mean, so about five years ago, I started this thing um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's been great. Like I don't, I don't go on radio. I'm on a local iHeart radio station, AM and FM and uh, streaming and we put it in the podcast. I don't get a million calls off this thing at all. If anything, I use the show to create content like video that I have my video editor chop up in the bite sized stuff. And I use it in email templates to educate my clients on different various things and questions that I honestly just hate answering over and over and over again. Like, what do I got to do, you know, before closing or how do I get my home ready or this or that? Like we literally use this stuff and we blast it out. And, and um, that's pretty much how we're using it. So we have like 1500 videos out there, Adam, and some of them have eight hits, 10 hits, no views. I don't care. Some of them have 22,000 views. All it takes is one person searching that, that is looking for, you know, the information you have and they're going to contact you. Yeah. So we, I, I, go good. ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I think that's very wise. I think a lot of times just when people are Googling, you just see like, oh, he does a lot of stuff. And they just see that and they just think you're, a, they obviously think this person knows what he's doing because he's done all, he does a lot of things. And it's not always necessarily the quantity of that, but the fact that they see that you do that gives more validity also to who you are and, and what you're doing. And then also just with those authors, I think it's, it's not always just about, uh, it's not always just about you. You have other people. Uh, on your show yeah. and that also helps you um, that also helps you um, spread your own name because if they're on some of them promote it and your name gets spread out among their sphere as well so it's just uh, I always recommend within the same vein is like that's one of the reasons why you should do some social content with anyone who's willing that you close a home with them and have them share it because they've then taken use them to market you use the people that you're working with to put your name out there in front of their sphere and the people that they know, because that's really how you get more business off of that. So I, the same thing that you're doing with the authors and other people that you have on there, using other people to help market you is really, really effective and key to help you uh, grow as well. So I think you do a really great job at that within, within that structure as well. There's some other cool stuff that happens too, as well. Like, one of them, like I walked into Nordstrom, like men's store back in the day when it was here in Providence. And this dude that worked there is like, yo, come here. And I'm like, uh, do I know this guy? He breaks out his cell phone. And he's like, oh my God, I got to show my wife. Took a picture with me. Now my wife, you know, she was like, Corey said, Miss Rhode Island. So, so you know, she's like, oh, I'm supposed to be the cat's meow, you know? So it was great because she's over there like, Ugh. And I'm getting this guy taking a selfie with me, paying no attention to my beautiful wife. And, and uh, I was like, this is awesome. Or like other times, like you'll go into stores and people's like, oh, how do I know your name? Like, you know, your stuff's getting out there. Like, it's just like every one of our radio programs has between three and 4,000 different listeners that cycle in and out, in and out. Um, so there is also huge exposure by that, but don't go into radio or podcast thinking that the phone's going to ring. 
It's just one tool in your arsenal to show authority and just extra content to blast out there and cover social media with. Great. So I, I want to be mindful of time. So uh, please, if anyone has questions, we have about 10 minutes left and I want to make sure we answer any questions or things that people may ask. But then also, Emilio, if you have other things that you want to make sure that people know about in terms of marketing or just what you're doing, I'd love to hear those. I'd love to hear those as well. Yeah. I mean, don't be afraid to try stuff. I, I literally just try whatever. I throw a ton of shit against the wall. Some of it sticks. Most of it doesn't. Whatever sticks, you just keep going with. And, and I guarantee you, like, I could sit here for hours and listen to you guys. Like, I would love to hear some of the stuff that's going on, some of the other stuff that people have done. If, if you've done something that's working really awesome in your marketplace, if you want to type it in the, the, the chat, you know, I know people do a lot of really awesome stuff. And I love as a company, as HomeSmart guys, we, we, we really do a great job of collaborating. I'd like to thank you, Adam and Corey and, and Todd and, and Dean, my broker and everybody for, for allowing this to happen. And everybody here listening, I mean, it's unbelievable. We got three full pages of some kick-ass agents. I know a lot of your names. I see you guys out there crushing it. I'm like, oh my God, why are you listening to me? No. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's so great as a as a network uh, that that we share it and just continue to help each other grow. You know, one thing on the trying things, I think it's um, it, it's a really great business uh, story. Is uh, Rovio? I think that's her name. The company who came up with the app Angry Birds, right? Everyone knows Angry Birds, right? And they uh, they everyone like, oh, they're crazy successful. That was actually their fifty second app that they created. The first 51 were just like not really, some of you've never even heard of, but they weren't afraid to continue to try new things and iterate and make it better. And they finally got uh, something that's successful. And then they invested all their time and money into this thing that worked. And so I think as an agent, as a marketer, you have to be willing to try things that aren't going to work. And you don't want to invest everything into that one channel. You want to be able to try a bunch of different things. And then when you find something that works, dump more money into that and pursue that, but don't be afraid to say, yeah, I'm just going to put $50 to this one thing and try it. I'm 10. I mean, you can run Facebook ads for $25 and see if it works for you. Right? So I really encourage try a bunch of different things and see what works and then invest more into that versus I see a lot of times I'm going to do three things and dump all my money. And then when one doesn't work, you keep chasing bad money with bad money and be wise with how you're investing with your, with your marketing. So definitely be willing to try uh, uh, new things. And David Dre says they try a new thing almost every single day. That's super wise and uh, yeah, be willing to try new things because it changes. Things that worked six months ago don't work as well now and vice versa. Uh, you were just thought you were talking about radio, you know, radio is like, do radio, don't do it. Just try it and see where it is and, um, and things change. So be willing to try new things for sure. Definitely. And everything is compounding, you know, just remember that everything you're putting out there, guys, it does come back, give more than you expect to get, um, whatever you can to help other people out, uh, other realtors out and whatnot too, is, is, has been fantastic. And, uh, thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate all these awesome comments. Thank you. I have a question from, uh, so question from Maggie. Uh, do you think it would be a good idea to form a new team with other new agents to divide and conquer on implementing your marketing ideas since I can't hire a marketing assistant right now? Or do you think it would be the blind leading the blind? My opinion, right? I, I think that there's only one chief in the pack, right? So if you're, if you're talking about a collaboration, I've seen people do it and be somewhat successful. There needs to be one president, one CEO. When you, yeah, David Dion agrees too. When you start having two, it's like a tug of war for power and it, it's like a house of cards. My suggestion needs to be one leader. And I think you should definitely get some experience. Why don't you jump on a team, find out how to really roll with the big boys, big girls, and, uh, and, and, and then like just learn the business inside and out so that when you do jump in and do a team or at least get five transactions behind you and expect to fall on your face 10, 15, 20, 50, 90 times, I still fall on my face. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, too, is a lot of times uh, your second part of your question is like, you can't hire a marketing assistant. There are really cheap resources like uh, Fiverr where you can get people helping you do things for like five, uh, five to $25. And so when you're starting out, 
it's not as polished as hiring a, a well, well established, uh, you know, marketing firm or people who are going to do that full time. But Fiverr is a great site uh, for sure. You're trying to get a bunch of stuff out there cheap. They will, they will give you a bunch of things in there um, as well. There's another site that we have used before. It's called uh, Design Pickle. And that pretty much allows you to use unlimited you can get unlimited design for like $2.99 a month where they have different plans. That was the most I could remember, but you can get unlimited designs for like 300 bucks a month. And so if you're just starting out and trying to get cheap marketing done, I would use those versus having to pay a full assistant because you can get a lot of assets. Um, yeah, you get a lot of assets out there um, for, for cheap. And so I think that's the way is quantity, um, quantity over, uh, uh, quality sometimes is, is important, especially when you're trying to get your um, your name out there. Can I leave you with one takeaway? Sure. My suggestion, I had somebody very, very, very brilliant tell me this, and he's fantastic. He's now our team manager. Um, and he said, Emilio, why don't you write down everything you do in a day? And then, you know, if you could do it for a week, great. I didn't make a week. I did like a day or two, wrote everything down. And then he said, go through there and cross out all the stuff you don't want to do, all the stuff that drains you that you don't like to do. And what we've done with that is we've built our whole team on that, what Amelia doesn't like to do, legit. So if you want to start a team, what do you not like to do? And if in there is selling real estate, then you can't, you can't be doing it. But, but if, <laughs> you know, you realize where you're most effective. So when you get up in the morning and when you're jumping out of bed excited to do the things you love to do, it's a whole different world and you're going to be so much more efficient. That's great. Um, last question. I have a couple of times. If is anyone for anyone on the call, if you're using multiple MLSs, um, have you found it's more effective to put it in multiple MLSs or keep it just in one? Um, whoever wants to chime in from that can, that was just a question I got a couple of times. So making sure that was at least put out there. Yeah, guys, that's a fantastic question. In Rhode Island, um, we have nearby Massachusetts and, and Connecticut. And when you combine all those three states, it's like the size of like Phoenix. Like, it's like, we're, you know, we're tiny here in New England. So we leverage all three of those MLSs. And I actually use that to win listings because I go in and I say, hey, listen, I know you spoke with two other agents. What, what's their game plan? They go through it all. I say, oh, wow, I'm surprised they didn't. They didn't mention that they're going to put you in mass MLS. There's an extra 19,000 realtors. And the way it works in MLS is if, if they're not part of the Rhode Island MLS, they're not getting compensated. So they have no, literally no incentive to bring their buyers here. And agents, by the way, are not looking on Zillow. They're looking on MLS. So if your home's not popping up on their MLS, good luck. You just So we're going to put you in front of about 30,000 agents versus only five or 6,000 agents like every other person here. Big, big win. That that works great. That's great. Great feedback on that. Thank, thank you. you for that. Well, we are right at time. So I just thank you so much for uh, all the insights that you've provided and just, you know, everyone's time is valuable. So A, I just thank you for giving your time this morning. I know you had to move an appointment to be here. So we just thank you so much for uh, for being willing to contribute and just uh, providing your, your, your insight and expertise. So we appreciate it so much. And thank you everyone who's who's joined um, and just hope that you have um, success in your business and keep engaging on these because we like doing them and making sure that you guys are, are growing in your business. Like what you're hearing on The Real Estate? Tell your friends about us. Tell them to check out all of our episodes on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. And don't forget to send any topics you want us to tackle to therealestate at homesmart.com.